Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. It's Friday, and so I just want to remind you that Sunday is a great time to gather with other people who love God and want to know more things about God and be with those who love God. Uh, 8.30 and 10.30 in Port Angeles, Washington, 120 West 8th Street, Calvary Chapel, Port Angeles. If you can't make it in person, you can find us online at 10.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And just go to calvarypa.org, click on live service. We're in Acts chapter 10. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. While Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision that he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate and called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while... Peter was pondering the vision. The spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited him to be his guests. We're just going to pause there. There's a lot just in that. First, we have this Gentile soldier, Cornelius, who is devout in his faith of some sort or former fashion, and in his worship, and in his giving. And it's been going on for a little while because it says that God, in this angel, whether that's Jesus to him or just an angel, we're not totally sure, probably just an angel, um, said that your, your obedience and your faithfulness has come before um, the Lord, as a memorial, your prayers and your arms. Uh, in other words, you, you've been noticed, right? Sometimes we go about life and the Christian life and we wonder, does God even notice? Right? I've, I've been giving. I don't get pats on the back. I don't see any big reward. It doesn't change my financial status. You know, I'm faithful in that and uh, I'm praying. I'm doing these things. Who knows? Well, God knows. Above and beyond anything else, God knows. And so this story we see, and there's going to be other reasons for it, but I think one of them is just to know God's aware of what's going on in your heart and in your life. What you're praying about, what you're interceding for others about, the things on your mind. God's concerned about those things. And so for this Cornelius, God's demonstrating to him that he knows, he cares, he understands, and he's got a plan. And so he sends for, tells him to send for Peter. Meanwhile, Peter is over there, and he's having a little prayer time, and God gives him this vision, and eat. And he's like, whoa, no, Lord. Which, you know, again, Peter should have maybe learned already that you don't say no to the Lord. right? Um, but he was kosher Jew, right? There were certain things the law said, don't eat, and there was reasons for it a lot, a lot of times, and so he's like, no, I can't do that, and God was preparing him. So don't call common what God has made clean. It's not the things on the outside that make us unclean, Jesus taught. It was that which is from within. 
And so Peter's a little perplexed by it. He's pondering this vision, and, and at that time he gets the knock on the door. And the Spirit nudges him. There's some men here. You need to go with them. And so he's ready. He's willing. And it's a great picture. Before we get to what happens uh, next week, it, it's a great place to pause for the weekend. As we think about Cornelius, a devout Gentile, going to be meeting up with Simon Peter, a devout Jew who had been with Jesus. Till next time. I'm little by little.